Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Uh, hope this one worked out. Um, so we're catching a crash live. Um, my account, I had transferred over from Binance, um, the money they had over there. So the value has gone up, but not significantly. I have tiny positions in Next and Stellar that I was buying on the latest rally, but we're rolling over. So let me show you my scaled in buys. Um, I just I just placed them. Um, I put one at sixteen thousand. So I have a point. I had a point oh one at sixteen thousand. A point oh two at fifteen five. Point oh two at fifteen. Point oh five at fourteen five. Point oh five at fourteen. Point one at thirteen. Point two at twelve. Point three at eleven thousand. And point four at ten thousand. Then I'm going to save the rest of the money and try to trade on it. So you can see that um, the big the big thing is to try not to be too early when you're catching one of these bottoms. Uh, it, it's very hard to say where the bounce is going to be uh, because they're they're so violent. So let's try to get some analysis of where this one is going to bounce, if it bounces, and that's always a big caveat. Because I, I, I said, I don't know how many times, there's, there's going to be a 90% bear market. We just don't know when. And so, based on this, 15,000 is a potential bounce. So, one thing we want to check here is the spreads. Um, we're bid at 15.8. 15.8. 15.8. 15, that's pretty tight. So that's looking a little bottomy. Um, yeah, I'm not too confident in this as a bottom. The volume is big. We've been stair-stepping down. Let's get in closer. Yeah, it, it, I can't really articulate it. It just feels like it wants to go lower. Usually you don't get a bottom on these dual candles, dual, uh, uh, I don't know what that's called, but flat, flat bottom candles, you don't usually get a bounce on those. You usually get a bounce on a spike candle like that. That's on the three minute on the one minute so the size of that spike that's not big enough for me it could be I mean that that could be the bounce right there um, so normally the way you play these is that the market once it does bounce it will stabilize uh, it will be a series of violent red candlesticks until it does like I said before, you cannot put your bids in in here. It's too wild. You just have to get them at spots. You can see I spaced them out 500 bucks. The only one that got filled was 16,000. I don't mind that because all I'm looking to do is to get back into Bitcoin at a cheap price. Um, I, I don't want to trade the alts. You can see I, I picked up some Stellar and it's getting killed. <laughs> I don't. I don't have that much. I have a tiny, tiny amount. But uh, my my theory on it was that it it was bouncing after Bitcoin. So you can see that across the board, well, Bitcoin Cash is up. Wow, is this money flowing to Bitcoin Cash? Uh, could be. I cannot believe that Bitcoin Cash is at 3,200. That is insane. Yeah, so it, it appears that some of the money is flowing into Bitcoin Cash. Augur had a huge run, but this is a little tiny, you know, little dinky thing. That's nothing. You can see 84 Bitcoin volume, but that's completely irrelevant. So, ones that I'll probably play will be Stellar and Next. You can see I already have tiny positions in those. When we do get a bounce, 
and it looks like this may be it. So we're going to look for a 50% retracement and what do we do from there? Yeah, this is this is highly unusual to see this, uh, these dual candlestick type of a bottom, but you have a variation on the charts here. So now you can see forming up on the 30 minute and on the hourly, even on the two hour, we have a pretty good spike, pretty good spike. The six hour still looks kind of bearish, looks like it wants to go lower. 12 hour. So you can see we've corrected from the high that we made. This is Bitfinex. The high on Bitfinex was 19,891. We've corrected below 16,000. That's a $4,000 move. Let's check Bitstamp. Got a bounce in Bitcamp. Uh, bit stamp after a series of brutal red candlesticks. You can see that just nothing but red from about 17.6 uh, all the way down to 15.8 and these are one minute. This is one minute candlesticks. That shows you the incredible volatility of Bitcoin. Let's jump over and look at the Coinbase price. <laughs> okay, yeah. So supposedly Coinbase gave us a quote of 14.2. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's check it at Coinbase. Now I have noticed that, ah, Coinbase is down. <laughs> Big surprise. So they took, they took Coinbase down. Retry for live version. Okay, so it looks like they came in. Nope, can't get their charts. So we can't get Coinbase charts. This is the this is data from an API. We don't know if this data is accurate. What it, what on earth is that? <laughs> so Coinbase supposedly had within a thirty minute period a uh, price of fourteen thousand two hundred. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it doesn't surprise me that Coinbase, uh, we'll just say, went down. More likely, Coinbase took their site down intentionally because they can't deal with the volatility. They don't know what the price is, basically. Um, kind of looking like a bounce, big volume coming in, but we've had a couple of these. We had one here, we had one here. One thing that makes me think it probably isn't the bounce for this move is this isn't enough volume. You know, we like to see massive volume on a massive spike. That's the thing that's gonna convince us that we've actually got a bottom in place. Now, there's obviously a fantastic arbitrage play here with Coinbase because the prices are so out of line but Coinbase doesn't want to give us a price. Here, supposedly we have 16,450. Okay, let's see what Coinbase reports on their one hour chart. Yep, so you can see that. Now, keep this in mind, because we will revisit this, because Coinbase erases prices. So you can see here, you're my witness, that at 4.40 p.m., Coinbase quoted a price of $14,000 per Bitcoin but they're currently up around 16,450. Um, and, and usually Coinbase is higher by four to $500 than the other exchanges. So a lot of funky games going on over at Coinbase. Not surprising one bit. Uh, checking the market cap. We, we hit 660 billion yesterday. That might not have been the high, that's just what I saw. So, after this bounce, could we go to the trillion? Absolutely, we could go to a trillion in two days. 
Now here's this move in Bitcoin Cash. Let's see what the 24-hour volume is. So Bitcoin Cash comes in number two right there with $4.23 billion volume. That's massive. That's just behind Bitcoin's volume of 6.95. So we've got a lot of money bleeding into Bitcoin Cash. $50 billion market cap. So you can see here when we do market cap, Bitcoin's number one, Ethereum's number two, and Bitcoin Cash comes in there at number three, twice as big as Ripple. Like I told you, I got out of IOTA. Uh, I should have made a lot more money on that coin. We got a huge bounce, but I had to get out because Bitcoin was crashing. That's the thing about uh, trading alts with Bitcoin in the background is that you have to be so careful because Bitcoin can take away all your profits. Because since your coin is denominated in Bitcoin, the traders tend to take the alts down just as violently or more violently than they take down Bitcoin. So it's a double effect and you can have a phenomenal move in your coin and still lose money. So once I see the crash starting, then I tend to scale up, scale back to straight cash, wait for it to play out. Now I may only get filled here on the on the one, just to, just this tiny buy at sixteen thousand. We may, we may not even go any lower. Uh, yeah, it's tempting here to buy some Bitcoin. But what I was doing earlier today is scaling into when Bitcoin bounces to scale into the alts because they t they tend not to move as fast. Now, if you look here and look at Stellar's chart, let's go back and forth between Stellar. Stellar's the biggest loser. Next is right behind it. These charts seem to be trading one for one. Do you see that? Stellar and and uh, now these are dollar ones so the effect of Bitcoin is is there but they reflect Bitcoin's uh, chart but they seem to be stronger than Bitcoin relatively so the big issue is has Bitcoin bounced is this gonna be it for a while because the way it works is that once it bounces, it, uh, it rallies for quite some time. And then things stabilize, the alts begin to stabilize, and then the next round of alt rallies begin. This one kind of seems to have begun prematurely with Bitcoin Cash. I don't know if that's going to hold. I don't know if this rally is going to hold. I am not confident enough to step in and buy this market right now. A break above this pennant would be bullish and make this look like a bottom. So we want to see this tick above that candle right there and fast and then rally really hard, probably all the way up to here, then fall back, then back and fill, and then we've got our bottom. But I'm not confident enough yet. I said they probably get a 50% bounce. 50% is going to take us of this drop from 17.5 to 15.7 is going to take us to, what is that, $1,800, be $900 off this bottom. Uh, so $900 off of this bottom is sixteen six. It's right there. So that's where our 50% rally is going to take us. That's where we want to watch for it to roll over. Because in severe corrections, you get these mini bounces and then you get a rollover. So you can see here we're going, we're starting to get that rally now. Uh, we've broken out above that mini flag pennant and we're trying to make that 16, 50%. .6 so we wanna watch that. Yeah, I'm reluctant to trade anything right now. Now, anything that I trade, I have to trade in USDT. And the reason why is because all I have is USDT. You can see I have a $26,500 balance in USDT. And I have 0 .2, 0 0.02 Bitcoin, which ended up, I ended up buying at 16,000, the only one that got filled. So that limits me. I, in a market that's this volatile, I don't want to convert to Bitcoin and then convert to an alt. Uh, there's too much loss on the transaction. The spreads are too wide. So let's get to the let's get to the main alts here, 
and see how they're doing percentage wise. So Augur, Augur had a huge, huge move. And that was earlier today, that was before this crash started. Uh, and then Bitcoin Cash has just jumped out of nowhere, has jumped into second place. I cannot believe how rapid that move was. I didn't even see it. It actually started before this correction. Uh, radium, no volume, irrelevant. Library credits, wow, what a move in library credits. I wish I would have held on to that. I was scaling into this little bottom and I did not think that was going to be as big of a move. Big mistake on my part. Expanse, Dash, look at that. Can you believe that Dash, oh wait, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's decent volume on Dash. So Dash is getting a little bit of interest. Um, so that's the percentage gainers. We want to look at percentage losers. Einsteinium, wow. That's almost a 3,000 Bitcoin volume. That's not small volume on that coin. So you can see long-term, it's in the midst of a long-term breakout. It's consolidating during a long-term breakout. Uh, but just a massive, massive sell-off. If this were more of a major coin, I would step in and buy this coin right here. But because this is like a tiny coin that is just a tiny alt, I don't have enough confidence in its survival. There's too much possibility of a black swan event coming out of nowhere and killing the coin that I, I'm not going to commit to. It. So here we go. Here's, here's our rally in um, Bitcoin. We've, we've passed that 50% point now. So this is going to be the point where we watch for a potential rolling over. If this is a serious, serious correction, and like I said, we have not had a serious, real serious correction for quite some time. And, you know, big picture, we're in the midst of a parabolic move. And parabolic moves go into stalls and they crash. And that potential is always there. A crash is always, whenever you're in the middle of a parabolic move, I mean, a crash is always possible in any asset at any time. Because insolvency is always something that's hiding in the background that can happen to any company or any government or any cryptocurrency or any asset. Gold and silver cannot become insolvent. But anything else can it can go to zero. So that's always hiding in the background and in your, if you're in the midst of a parabolic move, that is always ha has to be a nagging doubt in the back of your mind that that could possibly happen. So let's go back and recheck the Coinbase chart based on the API. <laughs> what is that? What on earth is that? Is that insane? Seven, they're quoting a price of 17,000. Did somebody actually get filled? I don't see any, oh, volume is disabled for Coinbase. Isn't that convenient? Yeah, we don't get to see. Talk about a bunch of shady characters. Wow, these guys are beyond shady. So how does Coinbase offset their risk? How do they hedge? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, they're in the business of taking cash from people who are transferring it through, from banks, from credit cards, money wires, whatever, getting their money to Coinbase, buying Bitcoin. People are also transferring their Bitcoin over to Coinbase, selling their Bitcoin. Uh, so, Probably the only safe way for them to do business is to immediately offset their risk as it comes in. When a purchase is made, go into another platform and, and make the purchase for the same amount. Um, but with the slippage and the violence in these markets, you just, it's hard to hedge your risk. So I'm very curious as to how Coinbase hedges their risk. This is how the, that shows up on the chart. So I'm going to revisit this because I expect this chart to get scrubbed. They scrubbed the spike to 19. <clears throat> we had one before this and they scrubbed it. I think it was this one. So you can see here uh, on December 6th, 
December, let's see, December, on December 7th, the price on Coinbase hit nearly $20,000. If we go back to the daily on Coinbase, December 7th, Coinbase is now reporting a high of 17,346. So Coinbase is has scrubbed their figures to the tune of $2,000. That's a shady operation. That's people that you can't trust. But they're one of the only ones that's out there that we can get our money into Bitcoin. So here now we're starting to see the rollover correction. This is what I was expecting. This is actually came in more around 70%. So around a 70% retracement, uh, we're starting to get that rollover correction. These candlesticks look bad on the one minute. They look okay on the three minute. They look bad on the five minute. They look good on the 15 minute. Now, let me explain to you what I'm referring to. A bottom, a temporary bottom in these cryptocurrencies or virtually any market is going to be a red candlestick that's like a reversal candlestick. It's, and it's gonna have green candlesticks coming after it. It's gonna have a huge tail spike. You can see the size of this tail goes from 15.7 up to 16.2. That's a $500 tail. That's what you're looking for in a bottom and also huge volume. I told you the volume I didn't trust. It didn't look big enough. This volume does not look big enough to me to be a bottom. For there to be a bottom, you want big, huge volume. Uh, something like happened on this breakout, but maybe something like in here. It's not really showing up on the six hour. Let's get out to the... So here's a here's a perfect example here. Back at uh, around 2700 bucks, we had this crash that was met by... It's probably going to be better on the daily. So you can see there's the candlestick. There's the big red and the big green, the massive volume. Look at our volume comparatively to what we did back then. Now, admittedly, the price is much higher, so the volume isn't gonna be as high. That's just gonna be a function of this insane market. But, and same, same with this one here, big volume. So big volume meets spike. That's how you spot it. And this this one's consolidating. So have we made the bottom? 50-50, mm, just can't say. So I'm gonna leave my buy in place. I think my next buy is at 15.5. So I have a buy at 15.5 and 15. I'm going to leave that in place. Also, you always want to check Polonix uh, USDT quoted price. So you can see that we got a spike up to 16.659, not as volatile as Bitfinex, and nowhere near as volatile as Coinbase. So. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's a time to step aside. Again, to reiterate, the the time to step aside is when Bitcoin is crashing. Uh, if you're playing alts, because the volatility is so dangerous, the spreads are so wide, and the underlying asset is decaying as the asset that it's quoted in is decaying as well. Uh, there's just very little potential to make any money. Whereas when things stabilize, you know, you can come back in here, you know, if you believe like, for example, that this move in library credits is legit, you know, you might get a, you might get a chance here to buy this, um, 
this base. So you might be able to get in at 3200 and watch it kind of work its way up to another pennant formation. Uh, that's going to be kind of long, long in building, I think. It's just looking at the chart. This one may be vulnerable for some time. So you can see we're getting back down. You see this price breakout right here, massive volume, massive volume, boom, boom, green candlestick. Um, the power just run all the way up to 40, so basically 5,000. So all that volume has still been in there. This buy volume, not much selling volume. This is all kind of sympathetic Bitcoin crashing. So if I were to get into library credits, uh, let's just use my point two. You know, I'd probably just buy it right now, depending on how tight it is. 3665 by 3672. Yeah, uh, 3675. So it's pretty tight. It seems to be basing. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just buy with my 0.2. But I got 16,000. Just for the heck of it. Now, could I got a better deal? Yeah, I could have got a better deal. But what I found is that the time it takes me to get here with the bots coming on top of me and get, get a fill is is more effort than it's worth. So when I want to buy something, I click on the amount of Bitcoin that I have, I click on the ask, and I click buy. Now it says I have, it says it's not enough BTC. I'm picking the low ask. You gotta back off these a little bit, so I just do 7,000. Or I'll just do straight 16. I don't know why it acts like this. So it gave me 16. So that's it. I spent my Bitcoin that I got at 16,000. I spent it on library credits. That's an example of something I like to do when we're having these crashes. But so I think I got 0.02 in library credits, got a 0.02 in Stellar, I got 0.02 in um, Next. And I have the vast bulk of my cash in USDT. Uh, I'm not convinced yet that this this thing is over with, but once it ends, we're probably going to make the run up to twenty five thousand, and that's probably going to be in the next couple of days. Talk to you next time.